next week. You're doing a new play, uh, which was written specifically for the venue that you're in on yes. the Dome on George Street. And for me and Mike Burns, and, who were in it. And mm. it's, uh, it, it's about clairvoyancy. It is indeed. And, and you, you're superstitious yourself? Um, no, no, I'm not religious. I'm, I'm quite spiritual, but I don't think I'm a... a you don't believe in the dead? Um, if I do, I don't think of it particularly in a, a, in a bad way. Um, uh, but the show is really, it came because the writer, Richard Cameron, who's um, a brilliant writer, has written some fabulous stuff, including uh, Scissors, Paper, Stone, which was Ken Stockt and uh, Juliet Stevenson. And he found out that um, often mediums or people who think they're in touch with spirits, it's closely uh, connected with people who are schizophrenic or multi-personality. So he's used that kind of um, storyline. It's black in places. Mm. It's funny, very funny. So um, I, 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 I can't believe I'm here, to be honest. Can you not? No. No, I cannot believe I'm actually in Edinburgh talking about being in a play at such a wonderful venue. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, such a big part for me, very um, deep. Uh, well, I say a part. I play Florrie, Laura, Lally, a geezer, um, Jenny. <laughs> so um, it's, it's quite a... A, a part to play. I have to say that as a five-year-old boy, <laughs> I was put to bed. And um, and the last thing I, I used to see was uh, you on screen in those Campari commercials going to oh. the airport. Which Long would time ago. Shall, shall we do? Yeah. Shall we do it? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you truly wafted here from paradise. No, Luton Airport. <laughs> 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 uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we'd like to do today, we'd like to do a little freestyle jam. Every single person in this audience, um, we want you to find out, just kind of reach in, reach into your handbags, maybe your pockets, check what's in there. We want you to take out the oddest thing that you own and hold it nice and high. Just hold it in the sky. Anything that we touch has to go into a rhyme, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Any single thing that we touch has to go into a rhyme. We're going to do this, we're going to do this as something, uh, we want to kind of write a love song here today with the objects you give us. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to reach randomly into the audience. There's, there's there's a lady there at the end holding the magazine. What's your name? Heidi. Heidi. Beautiful name. Rhymes with nothing, but I'll take it. Heidi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is set. Uh, this is you know this is set in modern day times. It's a love song that we're writing on behalf of a very lovely man in this room, uh, just for Heidi. It's one of your one of your clients from Microsoft got us to write this for you, Heidi. Uh, in this love song, every single thing that we're given has to be used uh, for Heidi, the accounts manager. Ladies and gentlemen, once you've got your object, hold it nice in the air. Hold it in the air. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to kick this off. It's a love song. It goes a little bit something like this, just to Heidi. It goes a little something like this. It goes. This is a love song, so let's get it on. It's a love song, so let's get it on. Come on, everybody, let's come on a rocket. Show it to us what's in your pocket. Listen, first of all, I'm saying that you got skill. I thought for a sec that these were strep sills. But you know what can I say, man? Me, I'm quitting. You're addictive like too many night quitting. You know what can I say? Yes, with a bit of respect. I'm saying you're hot like a little cigarette. So that's how we do. You know, right next to you, I'm a man who wants no extra. extra. Don't you know you like smoke up at the chimney? I'm saying you're so fresh, I've nicknamed you Minty. That's how I do it. Crazy flavor. You're so in my nose, you're like a nasal inhaler. That doesn't make sense, but that's the way it goes. You know what can I say sometimes when I flow? I'm saying to you that you're such a crazy lady. I put on my glasses and I pretend to be Jay-Z like, yeah, uh, it's your boy. Yeah, Jay-Z in the place, things we can't destroy. Don't you know in life, yo, I gone the wrong way. Should've got a high D and lost a Beyonce. That's what we do. Let's get one thing out of the way. Uh, they said uh, you're the Edinburgh Macca. And yep. I thought the first thing I think when I hear Macca is Paul McCartney. It's right. nothing to do with that. Has nothing to do with that. I usually have to explain it. You know, a Macca is a, it's an old Scots word. It's like maker. But all too often people think I'm some kind of builder. <laughs> so I have to hastily put it like in brackets afterwards, poet laureate, and then they get the idea. Okay. Right. A recipe for whiskey. 
Ring the Scottish rain clouds dry. Take sleet, the driving snow, the hail, winter twilight. The summer sun slowed down to pearl sheen dusk on hillsides, city roofs on lochs at midnight. And most of all, take the years that have already run to dust, the dust we spill behind us. All this distill and cask and wait. The senselessness of human things resolves to who we are, our present fate. So let's taste, let's savour and enjoy, let's share once more another glass for absent friends. Pour until the bottle's done. Here's life, here's courage to go on. Well, Isaac, I gotta confess something to you. What's up? Well, I've been keeping a secret to myself for the past month now, and I feel like this place is a good place to share it with everyone here. Isaac, I have scoliosis, yes. What? No, it's true. <laughs> and you can laugh about it, good. Humor will get us through this. It's the curvature of the spine. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I'm standing right here, real tears, real tears. But you told me you were auditioning for that new Smurf movie. That was a blue lie, my friend, a blue lie. <laughs> well, then I have, I have a confession too, Ken. Shall I sit down for this? If you wish. This might be huge. I told you that we haven't been able to rehearse from Friday night to Saturday night. But in fact, I lied. What? I'm Jewish, Ken. Oh my God! Not in the hatch, just tell someone. It's the Sabbath. Oh, good God. We have differences, but I think I know how to solve it. Okay. Hit it. Oh. My friend Ken Hall is not very tall. Next to him, I feel like Obelix. The gall can't do, can't do. The world tells him he can't do Every day He's got scoliosis Can't do Can't do Can't do Isaac's on my ride You see he's a different height And he hates it when I talk about Crystal Knight A Jew A Jew I love him cause he's a Jew He's sure Mary Shabbat It's true A Jew A Jew I must confide, one thing that hurts is pride. Our signs that say you must be this high to ride. And here's a fact I learned on Facebook chat. When he's at Wonderland, he can't ride the track. Hello. I'm very welcome to you. I've always wanted to run up steps onto a chat show. And now I've done it. Yeah, and I didn't trip. I didn't trip. Sometimes people just bounce off the end. Oh, I'll try that later. But it's OK for you. <laughs> um, you've been doing countdown for goodness knows how. I have, and I've been in close contact with Giles, as you say. He practically yes. sits in my seat when he's on countdown. But yes, it's me and the clock. That's we're the oldest people on the set. Are you very well, apart from, to apart from Jeff. Uh, no, but it's been there literally since the very beginning of countdown. So way before I even started, the clock is, and it's all so low tech. I don't look is it slightly like, like, like board? Is it like really well, we board? have men behind the conundrum board literally sticking the letters on, and all uh, Rachel's letters are uh, Velcro. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, if you came and saw it, you would be astonished. But that's the beauty of it, I think. Mm -hmm. It looks like an East German sort of set from the 60s, <laughs> but it's, well, it has been slightly enhanced lately, particularly by Rachel. Um, but it's just, yeah, so low key, low tech. You win a teapot. I mean, you can't get. You know, but that's the secret of the programme. It is. I think it is. Yeah, there's no come on down, big prizes. Now, you're not just a TV personality. I'm not even a TV you're not, personality. Well, you're, quite, but... you're not even a television personality. You're no. actually extremely, extremely <laughs> clever, aren't you? I mean, you know, it's not something... They don't just... TV people haven't just posited you there and said, read that from the, from the dictionary. You actually work with the Oxford University. I do, yeah. No, I do work with the dictionary. But it's a brilliant job that I have because I, I don't work with them. I don't write dictionaries anymore. But I get to see all the new words and I get to see this fantastic day space that they have, which has, you know, chat room conversations and street conversations, which are kind of eavesdropped on as well as, you know, all the serious stuff. Uh, and I can just see language in action. It's brilliant. And, and there's so much language we don't use. 
data yeah. isn't there? Yes. Um, and in, the, in those chat rooms then, do they use all those like lots of fancy They have words? different dialects, all of them. They have these completely different lingos, which is, which is amazing. But all the words that we don't use are always my favourite. Just to give you an example of one I thought the other day, which is a ways goose which is an old dialect word for a picnic for members of the printing profession. I love that one. And what is it? there's tag ham or something, which is a Scottish tag. word. Tag ham. I don't know if anyone knows this here. Which is a word for looking for inspiration while hiding in a bullock's hide within a waterfall. Within a waterfall. You know, literally hiding within a waterfall, looking for inspiration. You have I'm going to, to try it. For inspiration, otherwise it doesn't work. It's just that one word. It's just packed that whole tradition in. I just, I, yeah, it's brilliant. The, not only the words, but also the dialect tell you so much yeah. about things like comedy, anxiety within the culture, etc. Preoccupation, right? totally. If yeah. you look at Yorkshire, for example, all the words are so earthy. You know, all the Viking roots with them. You've got mullock, gobslotch, fusty lugs. I mean, amazingly kind of earthy words. <laughs> and then fusty lugs is somebody who just kind of, you know, lazes around and doesn't do very much. A mullock is a mess. I love that one. Mullock. A gobslotch is a sort of glutton. Um, and then in East Anglia, my favourite dialect word of all time is daddle dum do, which is a daydreamer. And you can just imagine going daddle dum do. And they've made a word out of it. Is it Scott on guitar? Is that right? Yes. Thank you very much, boys. Can I just have her for a couple of minutes? Yes. Yeah, she'll be back. You'll have quicker. I don't waste the time. Uh, Kate Hopstick found, uh, found you when she came out to interview you. Yes. And she came back and she literally said yeah. to us, you have to have Storm Large on the show. You're making waves in America like nobody's business, aren't you? Oh, I, I, I hope so. so. I don't know, I'm here right now, so, so I'm not paying attention to the states. I'm just paying attention to the beautiful Edinburgh. It's awesome, I'm loving it. Okay, and now really. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I'm, I'm very well known in certain parts of the West Coast and, and some parts of New York City and some theater worlds. I'm, I'm, I'm doing very well. For someone who's independent, I'm doing very well. I would say that I'm very famous. I can't go to a, a, a piggly wiggly in the middle of the country and buy, buy a soda pop be chased by paparazzi or anything like that. Well, that's a nice place to be, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> How do you get the uh, the lyrics to the songs and everything? Because you're, they're very inspirational and they cover such a wide area of life. Um, they come in a lot of different ways. Um, writing the piece, crazy enough, theater piece, is the first time I've ever written narratively. Usually I get inspired by something I see or something I hear and I'll start to write. Just write about it and write about it and maybe a catchphrase will come up. Like with the song Lady Like, um, I had this chant in my head because I've, I'm always, I've always been a big girl and I just got shit for it. So um, I was writing a song and this lyric came in my head, what the fuck is Lady Like? Ladies like to do what the fuck they like, just like you. And it just over and over again. And that's like we were talking about with Ron earlier on, that kind of rhythm of yes. the lyric yeah. that they're going through. And, and it's not necessarily, you know, the words, what they mean, kind of happen later. Um, you can start out, especially writing narratively, you can start out, okay, we need to get this moment to go with this moment, what needs to happen in between. And then that brings in um, words and meanings of words and metaphors and whatnot. But in rock and roll, it's usually about rhythm and tone and, and attitude and emotion. The balls. Yeah, the balls. So the words definitely have, have balls. <laughs> I was no, I know. Uh, I know because uh, well, you're on at 22, 25 at the underbelly. Yes. Which is uh, 25 past 10. Yes. To, to everybody else. Um, and that's that's got to be a kind of raunchy show because you're kind of a raunchy girl. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. A little. I, I mean, this is fringe. I, I, I hold a candle to really a lot of the things going on in terms of raunchiness. Um, I, I'm not afraid of, of speaking my mind or to talk about sex or drugs or rock and roll or anything in between. But um, I've heard of some like, people saying, Dicks on fire, women, really. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. no. <laughs>